Hi everybody, welcome to another Max tutorial. I want to put to comparison in this tutorial how to program with uh, a shader with three different objects inside Max. So GGL Peaks, uh, GGL Peaks but using Codebox and GGL Slap using a GLSL programming language. So uh, let's start. I want to make a practical uh, uh, example and go to program a shader toy shader that uh, uh, it's quite famous this shader here is quite famous and quite small so will be quite fast to recreate it inside our three objects and make a comparison between the different methods used for every object so let me just copy the content of this shader and paste it inside a comment in max so we can work with this code in our objects. But uh, first of all, let me show you how to simply pass an image through uh, all those three objects, all those three uh, methods of programming a shader. So first of all, let's start with the first GGLPix. To pass an image through, we just need to connect the input to the output, and it's really simple. With Codebox, is also super simple, we just have to assign to the output of the code box the input of the code box. So in one goes out from out one. Simple. In GLSL, it's a bit more complicated. We need to uh, we need to write a bit of code. Now I don't want to use the, the max editor. I will open I open the shader inside Atom. So this is just a skeleton of what you need inside a GGL slab shader. We have uh, the JXS, uh, the XML stuff to make the, the shader run. We assigned, uh, we, we created a parameter called texture, uh, text zero of type integer, default value zero. This is the index of the image coming inside the input of the GGL slab. And then we bind this parameter to the fragment program. The, sh the vertex program is just a pass-through vertex program taken from the max library of shaders. So it just gives us the texture coordinates and that's it. So in order to visualize our image uh, from uh, GGL slab, we need to sample this image. So as you see the texture, inside GLSL is represented uh, as a sample 2D. Rect uh, means that the coordinates of this texture are in the range 0 to the sides of this texture is minus 1 and they are not normalized coordinates. They don't go from 0 to 1 but they are integer coordinates. They go through the, all the sides of the texture. So in order to uh, visualize this image we need to create a back 4 which is the type of the texture, uh, I mean the image, every pixel of the image is a VEC4 because it has four planes, red, green, blue and alpha. And then we need to sample this image using the texture to the rect uh, function, rect because we also add the rect in the sampler to the, so we write the name of our texture and then the texture coordinates. Uh, dot x y and then we have to pass this value to a built-in um, output variable this is the final output of our fragment shader of our shader and we have to assign it to the uh, vector that we just got so when we go inside glsl if we save also here as you can see uh, the program has been modified because it's uh, the same file read from uh, G, uh, from atom so I just save here and we get our default texture, which is this checker image. I can also read uh, another image, uh, like this uh, forest image, and you can see that this passed through uh, from all our objects. So, okay, let's try to implement the shader that we found uh, inside G uh, Shader Toy. So it's a super complex actually but really brief shaders so let's actually copy it inside our first object our first ggl peaks let's copy it inside a comment and see how we can implement this by simply patching 
uh, by simply using our patching method, so by connecting uh, Max gen, uh, GGLPX objects. Let's see. First of all, uh, Shader Toy uses this define, uh, it has some uh, built in variables like time and resolution that we don't have in Max. So, to create the time, we can use, for example, the clocker object, uh, which gives us the time since it has been activated in milliseconds. Uh, we can divide it by 1000 in order to get it in seconds and then we can simply create a parameter object inside uh, our ggl pixel so param and let's call this time with the default value of zero and we can say prepend time here so now we have a time variable inside our ggl pixel let's put this here perfect so, we have our time. The resolution is actually the size of the window and we also have to get it uh, from our world. So, if we create a get size message, we can get the size of our window from our world object. Now, since we actually resize our window quite often, we would want to automate this process through that we can use a Q-metro, for example, and call this, uh, call this uh, message every once in two seconds. So, then when we are here, we can just uh, uh, root the sides. And then we can say prepend, for example, resolution. So, this is now our resolution parameter. And we can send... Uh, these to our ggLpix object. So let's connect it here. Now it will complain that there is no resolution parameter, so let's create one. And this is a this is a two uh, is a two component vector, so we need to give it two default values. Okay, so let's see next what we have next. We have the main image function, which is like the main image inside GGL uh, slab. It takes the frag color as an output and the frag coordinate as an input. So this will be our texture coordinates. And uh, in GGL Pix, this is represented by the norm object. So frag code, it will be our norm object. And let's see what we have else. So we have the declaration of a C vector tree. And for the moment, let's just not care about it. Then we have the declaration of two floats. And one of those floats is assigned to the time because T is actually our time so I, uh, since it's defined here as T uh, time. And then we have a for loop. Now, instead of, we cannot make a for loop by simply using max objects, so let's see what else we can do. Let's see. Uh, we, we have the... Oh, R is our resolution. Uh, these are the, co the, the coordinates, so like the... Not the normalized coordinates, but the, the coordinates in integers value, divided by the resolution in order to get them in the range 0 to 1. Well, we actually already have those um, coordinates in the range 0 to 1 by creating the norm object. So, uh, instead of using a frac core divided the resolution, we can just use the normalized coordinates. So, uv is a two component vectors that is assigned to p, which is basically our normalized coordinates. So let's just this be uh, uvu and at the same time this is equal to p. So these are just normalized coordinates. Now 2p is subtracted 0 0.5 uh, in order to go from the coordinates from, min, uh, from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So let's also do that. Let's subtract 0 0.5 to both the x and the y um, coordinates. And then let's see what comes next. The x component of our coordinates 
is multiplied uh, by the resolution x divided by the resolution y. So, okay, in order to do this, we have to switch uh, the x and the y of our resolution parameter. And then we have to divide the x. We have to divide the x from uh, by the y. So, like this. And then we are multiplying this uh, for the x value of the normalized coordinates. So we also need to switch our normalized coordinates and multiply this value, the x value, by this uh, uh, ratio, ratio here. And then we can recompose our vector, uh, our UV vector, with the, the changes made. So this is our UV vector. No, sorry, this is our P vector. Now, uh, this uh, division, this, this is our ratio, it's the window ratio, and this is done in order to have the same proportions for every dimension of our window. So we will see um, probably later how this affects our image, but uh, for the moment just know that this is because of that. So now, every time we go through the loop, the Z parameter gets added to 0 0.07. Okay, so instead of doing a loop, what we can do is sum 0 0.07 to the time. So let's do this uh, three times because this is a three a for loop that gets executed three times. So let's actually instead of using a for loop, let's just do this manually. So 0 0.14 and then 0 0.21. Okay. So this is the first for loop, the second for loop, and the third for loop execution. Okay, then let's take it takes the length of the P. So let's you we have also the length uh, object inside uh, GGL pixel that allows us to take the length of a vector as as they do here. And then the UVU uh, value gets summed to this uh, to this stuff for every component uh, uh, for every time the, the loop the for loop goes through. So uh, let's see. Bef uh, first of all, let's see what is this. Uh, uh, what is this stuff? I'm not going to explain this because I also have to wrap my head around it myself yet. Um, so I will just limit myself to write it and give you an hint on how you can write this inside GGL Pigs. So first of all, we have a P. Now let's start from here. We have the sign of the length multiplied by 9, so let's multiply this by 9, our length, and this gets, uh, to that gets subtracted uh, the value of the time, the negative value of the time, uh, multiplied by 2, so let's multiply this by uh, minus 1, so we have a negative value, now let's multiply this by 2, and then let's subtract this to the length. So we are now here. We took this, this part. And let's take the sign of this. And then the absolute value as we saw as we see here, it wants the absolute value of this operation. So on the left side, we have to multiply that by this. So the sign of the time. So the sign of the time uh, plus one, and all of that must be multiplied by uh, p. So this vector here divided by l. So we first have to divide the p by the length of itself. So actually, this is a uh, a normalization of this vector that we are performing here and then we have to multiply this uh, 
with the sign plus one and then we have to multiply that for uh, this part of the of the um, of the calculation okay so it's super complicated let's see what we have on the next line uh, we have the length oh and this is of course added and this is of course added to uh, uvu which is actually our normalized coordinates so this gets added to our normalized coordinates so let's create our normalized coordinates here to and this gets added to that then let's not forget that we have to do this for all the three times of the for loop so this was just the first one now uh, you can index a vector inside the shader toy glsl and also inside GitLab by using the uh, considering the vector as a, an array so you can use this uh, operator to uh, go through the vector but actually you cannot do this by using um, simple max objects so we will have to find a workaround so uh, what we can see is that is actually let's create our vector c here so this is actually c and let's see so the first component of the vector is this the length of the absolute value of the modulus of uv uh, and 1 minus 5 so let's start by taking the modulus the modulus of uh, uh, 1 of uv added to all this stuff and then let's take the absolute value of that and let's subtract 0 0.5 from this now let's take the length of this uh, let's take the length of that and let's divide 0 0.1 by the length of that so we can use the exclamation mark with a div division operator no sorry this is 0 0.01 it's not 0 0.1 and this will be the x no yeah this will be the x component of our c vector okay kind of crazy and this was our first uh for loop execution let's go to the next one now in the next one we have to use uh, the time plus 0 0.14 and let's see so let's see these are created fresh another time so uvp well, we don't have to change this part we have to just to use now for that for this stuff we have to use now uh, the second actually this can stay the same we had to use the second uh, value of the time here and the length of p will be the same so multiplied by 9 zeta by 2 and now we have to add these two uh, we have to add these to uv so let's actually create another plus operator because this gets added again uh-huh the second time this gets added again to uv so let's actually let's actually make it like that this gets added again to uv and let's and then these uh, operation gets performed on that now and this is going to be the second component of C now let's do also the third one let's copy this stuff this goes here this goes here this gets added again and this now goes here
and this is the third component of C. Now our flag color, which is simply the output of our GGL pixel, will be C divided by L, which is still the length of B. So this length here, let's send it using a send object that also works inside uh, a JIT GL pixel. So receive L. This gets divided by L. And we can actually just uh, send this out. And let's see. So let's see what we got. Let's actually uh, let's actually go from no let's oh uh, we are seeing the image uh, let's take a default image as black okay Ooh, okay it's not really the same result as the shader toy shader this is actually much more it's totally different actually I mean, it's kind of different. So there is probably some problem with our code. Uh, I'm going to debug it just now. So for you, no time will pass. For me, probably a lot of time will pass. See you in two seconds. So yeah, uh, we got it. And let's see what was wrong. There were actually a couple of things wrong. Oh, sorry, let's delete also this output here. There were a couple of things wrong. And uh, let's see what was the problem. So let's go back with command Z. So yeah, I think this is where we were. This is what we add. So let's see what were the errors. Let's go back. Oh, funny, it doesn't let me uh, redo. This will be funny. I cannot redo. Ah, cool. So I have to do this again. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. First of all, let's delete the, imp the output one because it just gets some to that and this is not what we want. So then uh, we have uh, uh, minus one here is actually wrong. The time doesn't get to be summed, uh, doesn't get to be negative. Oh, this is pretty cool. The time doesn't have to be negative. It's just uh, this is this minus here is just this minus here. So the length multiplied by nine divided by time multiplied by two. So the minus was wrong. Then let's see. This is also wrong. To sum uh, continuously the normalized coordinates is wrong because the normalized coordinates get actually recreated freshly every uh, instance of this for loop. So we actually don't have to sum them with the previous uh, normalized coordinates. So we can just do something like that. And this is already getting us closer. So let's see. Oh, sorry, this is wrong. Let's see actually what else was wrong. Um, we see that uh, we actually didn't multiply uh, this this part. It was something like that uh, that we that we add, and this is actually wrong because we also have to multiply that. Uh, so we have actually to send it from here, not from the other one. So exactly like that. This must go here too. And now we get the right one. So was not that the most confusing journey inside GGLPix that you ever had? I hope not. But uh, anyway, uh, we recreated this shader inside GGLPix using uh, just uh, max uh, just gen objects and without using the for loop. Now this is uh, feasible when the for loop is so small, like three three times. But when if it was 100 times, then we couldn't have reproduced inside uh, inside my gen by uh, without using code box. 
So we will see in the next tutorial, because now it's a bit late, how to recreate uh, this effect, this shader, using code box. So I hope this was somewhat useful. And if I can, I would like to uh, point you to my website, which I will write in the description, and to my Patreon if you want to support me and to get a lot more cheater patches. So, uh, my website and my Patreon in the description. In my website, you can also find a lot of other resources and tutorial and free patches, so maybe it's worth a look. Uh, then, thank you for your attention and see you in the next tutorial that I will hope I hope will be a bit less confusing. Ciao!